out of all of those, uh, engineer, entrepreneur, founder, investor, entrepreneur is the one that resonates with me most. So I would say the biggest influence leading up to that um, for sure was my father. Uh, though he was not an engineer, he was a, he was a dentist, orthodontist, and uh, I was supposed to be a doctor, as, as many first-generation immigrant uh, Chinese children are supposed to be. Um, but I found that I was quite squeamish. But I did like math and science, so engineering seemed like a good alternative. Um, but also the entrepreneurship part of it, you know, uh, my parents emigrated with me from Indonesia to the United States when I was uh, four years old. So talk about being an entrepreneur and restarting everything and building a whole new life. Um, you know, that was kind of, that was the example that I saw. And so the idea of uh, going out and striking out on your own uh, was something that kind of always resonated with me long before I knew what the word entrepreneurship meant, but that sort of core essence of it. You know, this is a business that uh, is played out over, you know, in, in the span of 10 to 20 years because investing cycles are 10 to 12 year cycles and not something that should be thought about as, you know, something that you invest and you move on and, and make things happen quickly. One needs to be patient and sometimes the best and biggest outcomes take a dozen or more years to, to bear fruit. We saw this huge, we saw this market opportunity be laser focused on series A investing for tech startups and the things that we knew about. We were at firms that were great but had gotten much larger and so the amount of our time that we could spend was sort of split amongst many things, different geographies, different stages of investing. Um, and we saw that that was happening with our other peers and we felt that this was really a market opportunity. So we saw the emerging opportunity two plus years ago and now with you know the, the moderating and the closing of public capital markets and the downstream effects on that, we're seeing even greater need for people who are completely focused on this series A, you know, five to 10 million type stage. So I think the global issue that keeps me up at night is uh, education uh, and that in the United States, uh, I'm, I'm very involved with several educational uh, entities, everything from Donors Choose to Brown University's board and Castilea's board. Uh, on a more global scale uh, education uh, in the sense uh, that I'm quite involved with a group called One and they're very much, they have many threads, but one, the one that I'm personally most passionate about is, um, is providing educational, and not in the most formal sense, but really it is, it's, it's educational opportunities for women in particular in developing countries, educational opportunities on how to have better farming practices uh, and what education means, like I said, to you know, a subsistence farmer, mother of three in rural Tanzania obviously means a very different thing than when I'm talking about the things we're trying to do for you know, low-income inner city public K through 12 schools that donors choose or what we're talking about with you know, better educational opportunity and financial aid support for first generation students uh, at an Ivy League university. But to me, that's a common thread. And I feel like that has been so critical to my personal journey and my family's journey uh, in, in, you know, from being a little kid in Jakarta, Indonesia to being where I am now here in Silicon Valley. Um, but that's the thing that I, that I spend most of my time thinking about on that scale.